be a blue cross, all you need to do is look at the blue cross and try and keep your head and your eye as still as you can. This looks like a simple eye test, but the images being captured could pave the way for advances in dementia treatment. Stuart has been part of this study since last summer, after he suffered a mini stroke, a common risk factor for developing dementia. It was completely out of the blue, um, got one morning and as normal, and my wife said, I think your like, speech has slurred a little bit. And then later in the day I noticed I was having difficulty changing gears when I was driving. So it was a little bit of weakness in my left hand side. It was about a wake up call when they actually said, yeah, it's a mini stroke. My dad had strokes like years ago. So I, I know what can happen. Uh, so yeah, it was a bit, a bit worrying to say the least. Okay, strokes, come and have a seat, talk bed. As part of the project, Stuart's also given regular MRI scans and carries out cognitive tests, all of which give him extra reassurance about his own health. I knew I'd be getting looked after for another year or so, uh, maybe more so than I would be under normal circumstances. I'm going to be doing tests, etc. anyhow, so if this can help them by doing a wee bit extra, it's only time for me at the end of the day. It might be a major breakthrough, it might be a small step, but it's still progress. Stuart's one of more than 200 patients taking part in this study, which examines blood vessels at the back of the eye. But how could looking at the eye lead to earlier diagnosis of brain conditions like dementia? And the problem with the scanning in the brain is that we can't actually see the blood vessels. So by studying the blood vessels at the back of the eye, we hope that it will give us an indication of what's happening to the blood vessels in the brain. This area here, the blood vessel damage has got so bad that it's actually started to cause a little rotting. It's a bit like leaves in the autumn when they start to disintegrate. The tissue in between the veins kind of crumbles. What we're obviously trying to do is, is understand enough about this that we can stop it getting to that point. Professor Joanna Wardlaw is leading the research, funded by the Alan Turing Institute and the British Heart Foundation. She works with computational biologist Miguel, who uses sophisticated techniques to magnify tiny blood vessels and analyse their health. So these vessels are really quite small, so you would need to put a million of them side by side okay. to make a meter. The images are then compared against brain scans to try and spot early damage. When people think about dementia, that you might not immediately think about blood vessels. How important is it to explore the vascular side of things? The amount of blood that goes through your brain every minute is roughly equivalent to two cans of beer. So there's a large amount of fluid that has to get through and it's got to do it really efficiently in order to deliver enough oxygen and sugar to keep the brain going. There is something called vascular dementia, which is thought to be mainly due to the blood vessels going wrong, and that's maybe about 20% of all dementias. Whether on their own or in a mixture with other types of dementia, the blood vessels are just really, really important. So in the future then, do you hope that this could be used as a routine test to check the blood vessel health in the back of our eyes and then think about our brain health? I think that's very possible. Um, there are now, you know, similar machines in many high street opticians. Um, it's an easy way of getting some really sophisticated information about features of the blood vessels which give you an indication of the kind of state of health which we think relates to what may be going on in the brain. This lab, also at the University of Edinburgh, specialises in examining the brain itself and how its tiny connections can become tangled. The team here uses donations from the Scottish Dementia Brain Tissue Bank for its work. So what you're seeing around here is our little tiny bits of brain that we collect from people when they really generously decide to donate pieces of their brain after they die. They donate lots of different brain regions, but only tiny pieces, like fingernail-sized pieces. And we do something to them that's pretty unique, which is we take these tiny brain samples and we make them even smaller, so we've got really specific parts of the brain that are known to be involved in dementias. And then we embed them in a plastic resin so that we can look at individual synaptic connections. These synaptic connections are how the brain cells, the neurons, talk to each other. And these are things that die during the course of Alzheimer's disease. And when they die, you lose your ability to think and learn and make new memories. So what have you been able to find then by looking in such minuscule detail? Your brain is made up of about 100 billion neurons or 100 billion brain cells. They talk to each other through these 100 trillion synaptic connections, which is more connections in your brain than stars in our galaxy. And what we're able to see is that in Alzheimer's disease, you lose these connections and you also build up some of the pathological toxic proteins that clump in big clumps in the brain. 
So what we're really able to do on a fundamental level is understand changes in synapses and help translate that understanding into a drug that can hopefully rescue them. How close are we then to developing a drug that can slow the signs of dementia or even put a stop to it? How close are we is the question I get most often and it's hard to know without a crystal ball. What I can say is research works. We've all seen this with COVID, right? We had no idea what COVID-19 was a few years ago and within a year there was a vaccine. We already have some treatments that are in clinical trials, but at the moment there aren't any approved drugs that are really life-changing. What we are all trying to do here is come up with something that will change the game, stop the brain from getting worse, or maybe even help it get a little bit better. It's possible within my career, I would say. I'm very, very hopeful.